All right, what is going on, soccer card fans? Hopefully, you guys are having a wonderful day. And today, we're here with a video on why I don't really believe in vintage baseball and basketball cards. And I know it can be a bit controversial. I know that this might also sort of hit feeds of other sports card collectors. So, just for note, I primarily like soccer. I think soccer is probably a better space to be in than others. But that doesn't necessarily mean that I don't believe others can exist. I still think that plenty of other collectible spaces, cards, sports, whatever it be, can exist simultaneously without having to really fight all too much. But long term, I'm just a bit skeptical of what I'm hearing in terms of vintage baseball and basketball. And I'll give you a brief synopsis as to why before we get into more of the numbers. So when it comes to baseball, I'm someone that I love baseball. I'm not a baseball hater. Given the title and the subject matter of the video, you probably think I am. Personally, love baseball the most. That was my favorite sport for the longest time. Watched the Yankees all the time and just absolutely loved it. Now, I don't really care too much for it. The rain's picking up in the background, as you may be able to hear. A little bit of an ASMR. But, essentially, I love baseball. But now none of my friends do. I really don't. And I deal in a lot of internet realms. You know, we all live online now. We're all in our communities. I don't see anyone talking about baseball and obviously in the sports card realm it happens but i think in the greater scheme of things it's very very minimal and so i think that long term that's problematic because when there's an older generation of collectors for something at some point it's a bit morbid but they will pass on that will happen with card collecting in general we all have to deal with passing and how you know lives get looked at afterwards and that's really what it's all about it's it brings it all into perspective so this isn't anything crazy to talk about but once those bags need to find a new home and that's what i have demonstrated up there a person with a bag that needs to find a new home we all talk about not getting stuck with a bag well the reason people talk about getting stuck with a bag is because everyone's buying a bag right but most people are buying like prospect bags that they're looking to give to someone else that they might get stuck with there are legitimate great bags to hold long term well into the future and i think with baseball that's one that i struggle with who holds that bag once people have to sell and it might be the people that are you know getting a bit older and just need money it might be even after they are passed and their kids need money whatever it may be someone has to be the end user who is it i don't know at the end of the day these are cards that people have to have emotions attached to them i know baseball historically has been very collectible but just because historically it was very collectible does not mean tons of people are going to collect it now how many people do you see talking about ancient coins or something like that it, it doesn't happen Obviously, there are niches where people do do that, but in the sports card realm, you never hear anyone mention it once. So just throwing it out there. Um, with basketball, the same thing occurs. You need someone that has emotion attached to that player to want that card, right? That's, that's the fuel behind the fire. And with something like vintage basketball, people weren't watching that. I mean, I know now it's cool to look back on and say, well, look how good these guys were. They're this good all time. They should be worth this much. Let's go buy them. But a lot of the people I feel like that are entering into vintage basketball and baseball now are not people that are actually there long term. They just want something safe to hold on to because during these times of, you know, stuff's going a bit down, we're all getting a little nervous. People want to hold something they feel good about. And so I feel like a lot of people are running to something that they can feel good about when in reality, that's only going to make Make that asset worse because people only look at it for monetary value not for the value of which the card should be valued for so that's my brief synopsis let's go ahead and head on over to card ladder now on over at card ladder we're going to look up mickey mantle that's the guy everyone's talking about he has an sgc 9.5 that recently got graded going for sale everyone's freaking out so let's look at it. And I'm not even going to look at Mantle rookies because Mantle rookies are obviously just wild. I mean, look at those prices. It's ridiculous. Okay. But beyond that, I mean, even like, let's look at a seven. Pop 75. Uh, PSA what? We'll go with a PSA four just, you know, just for fun. Pop 200. So yeah, pretty rare. Makes sense. Now let's look even further. This is where it gets a little crazy. I'm going to go with Mickey Mantle 19, there, 1966. This is a great example. This is just a random Mickey Mantle card. This is 14th year Mickey Mantle that is pop almost 2,000 in a PSA 6, which means there's also 9s, 8s, 7s, 5s, 4s, 3, 2, 1s, half grades, SGC, BGS, every other new grading company. There's a lot, right? That's the point. There's a lot. There's just 2,000 in this grade alone. 
and when you extrapolate that out, I'm sure collectively there's more than 10, you know, maybe 20,000. And then there's other different sets he's in for each year. And then there's also every other year. And so what I'm saying is this is just one baseball player. I looked at Mickey Mantle and where he stands top all time baseball overall. The first two lists I saw had him like fifth and then like 13th. Obviously, the lists are ridiculous. You can you can never really know what the lists mean. But what I got from that was like, you know, top 5, 10 player of all time, which makes sense. Baseball has a lot of greats. And obviously, his rookie card is sort of seen as a hobby as like one of the go-tos. So he'll be a guy that people know. But long term, who are the 10,000 people that want a 14th year Mickey Mantle, right? Who are they? I I don't know them. I, I don't know who they're going to be, right? And this this is the important part to look at this graph right here i don't know actually let's just zoom out so i can see all of it again this graph right here is important because this shows from 2004 until now what happened and so in 2004 they were worth 150 well, like 100 bucks we'll say 100 bucks in 2004 maybe 130 now they're worth 550 but all of that gain basically came in the last few years 2017 they were about 180 a piece and then they tripled in price right so sure more people came in there's more hype for it now but long term are those really collectors did the collector i mean did the base really you know grow that much that this is going to sustain like this and that's what i don't know because again whenever i think of all the people that are fleeing to vintage baseball they're expecting returns too when people flee during these markets they still expect returns they still think that they're going to do well and as you can tell this mickey mantle for the longest time didn't do anything from 2004 until 2017 it i mean it doubled maybe at best which is a few percent a year compounded which is terrible that is terrible and when people start to see these assets that they think are going to return them x percent a year not do that i think they're going to back out because they have no connection to it and again a lot of people that buy into it they see it as money they see it as a store of cash which they then will take out at some point that's the theory so that's why i'm nervous about this type of stuff and i could go on and on and go into like plenty of different mickey mantles but just scrolling you can see what i'm talking about right 2000 there they're 600 a piece 1600 there they're 1000 a piece 1500 there they're 600 each and the same thing just continues on i mean tons of high pop cards that are worth good money like i just can't see it sustaining in the soccer card market, we can't even, like, messy rookies aren't even valuable now. I mean, they are, but, like, people are like, ah, you know, they're too high pop. There's there's a few hundred of each of them. And that's, like, messy rookies. And then we're talking about Mickey Mantle, and there's thousands of cards in every grade every year. And somehow they still hold good value, which is just mind-boggling to me. Absolutely mind-boggling. But just a warning, long term. And, again, this isn't too shit on baseball. I actually think, like, in the next 10, 20 years, it might be a safe sort of store of value in the sense that a lot of the older people that have this you know they're probably going to have good amounts of money for the next 10 20 years maybe they have to spend some here and there but i don't see it collapsing right i do think that it's relatively safe compared to certain modern stuff i'm not saying it's the worst buy but for what i think people are expecting out of it i don't think it's ideal um next up we'll go to julius irving um I thought that this one worked really well because it's, you know, it's a vintage basketball player that's pretty highly rated. So um, let's go and look at the 1972 tops. I'm going to go in a PSA 6, I guess, and we can just kind of talk about this. So this is another example where look at that chart. Look at that chart. So there is a thousand of these and they're currently about $800 each. Again, same thing as the mantle. I mean, when you go through all the other grades, there's going to be thousands upon thousands of these and they're going to be worth quite a bit of money. And then including into that, he has tons of other years with tons of other, you know, determined values based on pops and all that. And so with something like Julius Irving, how many people do you hear really talking about him? I mean, with basketball, I understand it got popular, but like, look at this graph again. In 2004, it was worth 90. In 2019, it was worth about double. It doubled over the span of 15 years, which, as I said before, is horrible. That is that is horrible. And now it's gone from 200 up to 800. And people think it's it's safe because, look, I mean, it peaked and then it came back down and then it peaked and then it came back down. But it's held up here. But will it move again? That's the question you have to ask yourself. And I feel like this could just as easily go down as it will go up. And 
that's sort of one of the issues with this, right? I don't think that a lot of the people buying into baseball or basketball vintage are the type of people that would weather this storm right here. This 15 year storm where these cards were underappreciated and basically only doubled in price over 15 years. And some didn't even double, right? We're looking at ones that did, some didn't. And now they 4X in a couple years and people still feel like they're safe. I feel, I feel it's terrifying, honestly. I, I love vintage soccer. I think vintage soccer has all the potential in the world, but vintage and other sports terrifies me because I, when you go on social media nowadays, when I talk to my friends too, and just my general experience is no one really has that love and connection and appreciation for what was before, right? And I feel like that's happening more and more where we just don't really, we don't have enough perspective to see it, right? And so I don't know how many people are going to even talk about Dr. J, let alone idolize him enough to the point that they want to spend thousands on this card and many others that he has. So that's where I'm skeptical. Part of the reason that Again, I feel safe with something like soccer, for instance, is, I mean, look at Johan Cruyff. We'll go with his Vanderhout, or not his Vanderhout, we'll go with the uh, Palarex, since that's basically the best one. Um, this one, you know what? I will say, it absolutely boomed. It boomed, and now it's bust, and, you know, we'll see where it, where it lingers in between. But what I can say is, Cruyff is around the same level as the other guys that we've shown. I'd actually argue he's probably better. Um, but... Just generally speaking, like look at the pop. Pop not going up a ton. I mean, since February hasn't even moved on this grade and there's 17 of them, right? Something like this, I can feel much more comfortable in, in the sense that I know there's going to be 17 soccer collectors that are gonna want it, right? With basketball, baseball, and those types of things, I don't know that. I really don't. And so that's where I get a bit nervous. I also kind of cringe a bit at the people that do recommend it as like plays or investments or buys or whatever it may be. The people that are preaching this on social media. I just, I don't get it. I don't see it. I know that it's what would make sense, right? Long term, in theory, you would think the same assets keep moving. But as we know, as we just saw in the hobby, there's cycles to everything. And I think certain things will come to the end of their cycle. And we'll see how that plays out long term. But just wanted to talk about that, sort of give my perspective, and would love to see what you guys think uh, overall in the comments down below. That's going to be it for this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. If you did, make sure to leave a like. On top of that, like I mentioned, leave your thoughts down below. Would love to hear them and respond. And with that said, if you want to see more videos like this as soon as we go live, make sure to subscribe. But with that said, hopefully you have a wonderful day, and uh, peace.